Central Coast, New South Wales, Australia. Deep in the Brisbane Water National Park is a mysterious site known as the Gosford Glyphs. The site consists of two massive eight-foot-high walls engraved with over 300 ancient carvings. Carvings that experts say do not resemble indigenous artwork, but Egyptian hieroglyphs. After deciphering the texts, 21st century Egyptologist Raymond Johnson believed them to reveal the burial site of Lord Nefertiru, a member of the Egyptian royal family. Well, at least one panel talks about two brothers, two princes, coming here from Egypt. They were shipwrecked. One of them ended up getting bitten by a snake. He then died. The fear is then he was interred here, and that's why you've got hieroglyphs here, because he died here. Why do you think the Egyptians made it all the way to Australia? I think they were looking for esoteric wisdom, definitely. From the Aboriginals? Yes. The ancient Egyptians, we have stories and Aboriginal stories about their arrival and about their visits long before Europeans had arrived here. Naturally, we would have shared ceremony with these people because they have the same similar beliefs as our people. Egyptians have that same spiritual connection to the sky world. Many stories from all over this continent, not just from here, but all over this continent, talk about those who came by the sea and came to these continents. And some of our knowledge and wisdom and technology went back with them. And if you do some of the research in the last pyramids that they found, they found boomerangs made from iron bark from here. And they have hieroglyphs of blackfellas from the boomerangs to take out the ducks and the geese. Now, the question would be, why would they paint us and carve us on their walls if they didn't come here? And if that meeting and relationship was not significant, they wouldn't have carved it. It must have been significant in order to carve. So I had, I had the chance driving back down the coast, um, got close to Gosford, and I said, oh shit, the buddy, <laughs> good chance to go actually check out the Gosford glyphs and see if I could find them. So managed to find them. But <clears throat> so just turned off near Gosford. I'm gonna, hopefully I can find the hieroglyphs that are around here somewhere. So pretty exciting. I think it's about a 15 minute walk. So be there soon. If you listen to, um, Stephen Strong talk about this area, you know, it's, they say, oh, it's been debunked and shit if you go to Wikipedia, of course. And um, <clears throat> it hasn't been debunked. If you look at uh, Stephen Strong's video here of this um, underground chamber, it does give credence to this um, this idea that, it, you know, it could have been an Egyptian burial site. Um, if you can see through his video, it's pretty interesting. And that it's um, obviously been tampered with as well. Ancient writing that Arnie Bev spoke about. What I can tell you about this one is there's a couple of glyphs that I do recognize and they're quite important. The first one here is the one for coffin. That is the correct glyph for coffin. You've got the line there, the round piece here. That is coffin. Below we recognize something as being half and the fascinating one is over here. This represents door and this little icon above is supposed to represent back. Back door, coffin, half. Directly behind the glyphs, there's a rectangular hole in the ground that leads under the rock where the glyphs are etched on. It's been dug up by others before. Gavin explains more. So here, we're sitting on a, a rubble pile that we discovered um, yesterday when we came up to the glyphs. Um, someone has pulled out an enormous amount of stone, um, including these blocks, which would weigh up to a few hundred kilos. And these ones here, beautifully flat, beautifully smooth uh, rocks. And uh, here we find the shaft. So someone's dug the tunnel out. Um, and when you go down in the hole, 
can find a shaft that goes uh, to your left here. It continues on for about 10 metres um, with two other, two other points um, down there which are quite small that you can actually put your arm into and you can see from this point in here. And uh, once you go further down, it goes down and under a lip. If you look under that lip, it uh, opens up into a chamber. Um, the chamber is quite large, large enough to park a car in, um, probably three or four metres wide by three metres deep. Um, we are unknown depth at this point because it's full of rubble. Um, but you, what you can see um, is it goes down again into another chamber. Um, you can see it goes down again and into another lip. Um, so at this point we have no idea what's, uh, what's inside the chambers, but um, certainly proof of someone with some marvellous rock carving skills. We've come from up here and we've come down into the first cavern. See? Note the flat surfaces and the straight walls and right angles. We come back here a bit. Come down. Let me see the first lip. Here, Gavin maneuvers down to another level and another room. But this also gives credence to the idea of, um, of this worldwide culture that existed, um, you know, who knows how many thousand years ago, even hundreds of years ago. And what uh, Max Egan was sort of talking about a lot before this sort of COVID stuff happened was, you know, about this, you know, global civilization of worldwide culture and this language that they called Magyar or whatever it was. And that this whole bullshit story that we're fed about the, you know, the white Europeans coming to Australia and you know, the 1700s and it was untouched before that. We don't buy into that at all. It's complete false and original people up north, you know, some some of these tribes eat with chopsticks and stuff because of the trade with Asia, you know, they're pretty close to Asia anyway. But, um, <clears throat> you know, that to, to think that there's, you know, boomerangs and Egyptian hieroglyphs as well is pretty interesting. So I sort of um, had this urge sort of from probably March onwards that I really wanted to get to a number of sacred sites and I've ha happened to do so um, a couple in Victoria this year and then obviously now up here so I don't think this will be the last either <clears throat> and there's not really any instructions on how to find them I don't know where they are. So I have heard before that actual type of rock here isn't uh, natural or native to this area. It's pretty cool, though, isn't it? I'll go check over here. <coughs> check out that tree. It's got a rock in it. Fucking worn shoes. <laughs> hey, found them. Now, from what I've heard, there's obviously fake ones on here, but real as well.
looks very similar than the Bohemian Grove owl, doesn't it? Logo, Bohemian Club. Now I've told you can tell which bits are fake by the depth of the engraving. see that it's quite deep it's all about the same length or depth sorry <coughs> then you got this one here said to be a typical fakery not the same depth as this one simple geometric shapes aren't they and they're like that's a classic one seen that used as satin before and that as well and then that one incredible who knows how old they are which we don't really know how fucking old Egyptian carvings are either history is unknown but absolutely beautiful area <coughs> don't have places like this where I am not many there's some of the cicadas thinking after I left that like fuck man we do we don't know history at all we you know the history we're taught is a lie and then anyone that even thinks they you know that tries to get a handle on history I don't really know either because you look at like Fomenko Alatoli Fomenko and stuff like that and the hidden chronology and what all that sort of stuff means is like, you know, have they, have they messed up all the timelines with things that happened a thousand years ago, only happened 200 years ago, and what about Australia? Like, were these, I know, like my town in Bendigo, we got a cathedral, it was built around the 1850s, and like, Bendigo was only founded around that time, they said it didn't finish being built till later, but a tiny little mining village at the time, like, why would they be building this grand, you know, European Gothic style cathedral, and then like View Street, the main street of town, it's like, it's unbelievable architecture as well, and all these sort of um, Roman style Freemasonic buildings all through the town, and then like, you know, were the, were the white man, were the white man already here, were the Aboriginals when they got here, and then if you look at like Dane Calloway's work, you know, he's, this, he's an African-American guy and he seriously doubts whether this whole slavery story even really existed and that were the black people already there and then we had this um, 
indigenous lady talk in the park in Brisbane on the weekend. She was talking about how the the Irish were the slaves over in uh, Australia, and they sort of joined in with the indigenous people up around the Brisbane area to rebel against the colonisers. So you know we don't we don't know shit about this history, and we're given timelines of Egypt, and then you know then Sumerian and Babylon that supposed to have you know predated that but then you know you got um go becky tempe and all these you know what what do we know and then you like i know when i lived in europe you go to all these old ruins and everything's down underground and it's just what they just keep build, we just keep building layers on top of the other you know you look at the mud flood and the founding foundings and the orphan trains and that but a lot of this stuff is probably going to come back to us and that we'll be known again and that if, when, when we enter this you know new future and hopefully an exciting time that it's going to be a rediscovery of our true history the true timeline and who and what we really are so anyway it was good to check out the glyphs so peace it was great to go to the brisbane event on um a couple of sundays ago i haven't been able to post since then so I've been banned because I tried to upload a video of Max, but um, I was actually lucky enough to meet Max in Brisbane. So credit to Max because that's how we, um, you know, that's how sort of a lot of people started looking into this um, this worldwide sort of civilization that may once have occurred, and Tartaria and the mud flood, which you know we don't we don't know about a lot of this stuff, but it, it was a real um, real game changer. This information as far as you know, how much do we not know? How much do we not know about history and, and timelines and how much of a lie have we been living in? So, also, I was lucky enough to, Max gave me, gave me a shirt while I was up there, so. <laughs> she has got the crow ass shirt. So anyway, it was great to go see the glyphs.